Hello, in this quick video, I want to show you how you can apply the displacement from a shader, which is just virtual displacement, to the geometry to make it real, really displaced uh, geometry. This whole idea comes from a conversation I had with a patron over at patreon.com slash crispy. They really liked the look of my 3D printed shader, especially with big layer lines. So you get this look that uh, like the, the entire object has these bumps from the layers on the sides. And how can you assign that to the object so you can use that new geometry, that displaced geometry, maybe send it to a 3D printer to get that look. So let's jump right into Blender and see how I would do it. Okay, here I am in uh, Blender. I'm gonna, of course, delete the cube. Shift A, I'm gonna start with a monkey and I'm gonna hit Control 3 to get three levels of subdivisions here. And I'm gonna hit hover over here, hit Control A to apply that modifier. So this is now uh, Suzanne's geometry. Now I'm gonna bring in the 3D printed shader because I mean, you can do this with any sort of displacement, right? But I'm just gonna use the 3D printed shader because that's actually what the person on Patreon um, was asking about. So in here, we're gonna need the shader. We're not gonna need a new material and we're gonna plug the displacement right in here. Let me just find the 3D printed shader file. Oh, I already have it here. So you just go to your to the blend file you can download, 3D printed shader, double click that. And when you're in append, the dialog in here lets you basically look inside of that blend file, what from that blend file, what kind of thing you want to append to this blend file that you're currently working on. We want to go to the node tree and we want to take the 3D printed layers, append that. And then we can hit shift A in our shader and we should have a group in here, the 3D printed layers group. Okay, so if I plug this into the displacement here, and if I add a modifier, oh, first of all, I have to go over to cycles, um, enable GPU and experimental, and then the modifier should be a subdivision surface. And because I enabled experimental, I can now use adaptive subdivisions, which is exactly what the 3D printed uh, layers thing uses to make this look 3D printed. So if we go over to the actual cycles render, it looks like this, yeah. So we have 3D printed layer lines if we look through the camera. Cool, let me just do this. Is it actually displaced? Not yet, because we have to go to, go to the material, go to the settings and tell the renderer that we want displacements and bump. And then it should actually use the micro displacements to create actually displaced. You can see the outline here is now displaced. Now this is rather low quality, but that's just a, a viewport thing. I don't like this uh, imperfections amount. That's quite a lot here. So let's turn that down. So we just have a little bit of, of imperfections here. Yeah, so this is what the 3D printed shader does. It creates these layer lines and it creates that top layer here at a certain cutoff point, okay? I have a video here on the channel if you're interested in the 3D printed shader. But this video is about how can we actually displace our geometry based on the displacement of this shader. So first of all, let me make this rather large. Let's have huge layer lines. And that's, uh, you have to do that by turning down the scale. Maybe this is a bit much. Scale, four, okay. So is this actually nicely displaced? What's the displacement scale? Let's bring that up maybe. That should make it more pronounced here. Yep, okay. What if I turn this down to black so we can see it a little better? Okay, so this will be the actual displacement. Now, the way we do this is we bake this into an image, use that image inside of a displace modifier, which actually displaces the geometry. Because right now, even though it looks like uh, it's displaced, if I go into edit mode, this is still the geometry 
of Suzanne. There is no displacement, no layer lines, nothing. This is the geometry and only the renderer makes it look like it's displaced. Now, you might notice that my 3D printed layers uh, node group here actually gives us a height output. So let's see, what does that look like? If we disconnect this from the surface and this from the displacement, so that we're back to this, and we plug the height into the surface, we should see, we should be able to see what the displacement map looks like. And yes, that's what it is. It's a black and white image. Black means you displace the geometry inwards. White means you displace the geometry outwards. And that's based on a displace center or whatever it's called of 0.5, right? So zero will be inwards, one will be outwards, 0.5 would uh, tell the displace modifier, stay where you are basically. Now this is what that looks like. This is the displacement that we now need to bake into an image so we can use it in a displace modifier. How do we bake something into an image? First of all, we have to plug it into the material output, just like what we have now. And then we need an image. So we go shift A, texture, image texture. We create a new image texture. Let's make it, I don't know, times two, 2000 uh, by 2000 pixels. Okay, so now we have an image texture. And we can bake this, whatever we're looking at here, um, into this image. Baking is a feature in here in the render tab. Down here we have bake. Um, remember we're in cycles. We're gonna bake combined, let's try that. We bake to an image texture and if you hover over here it says bake to image data blocks associated with active image texture nodes in materials. This has to be active. You have to click on it. This, this is now the active image node in a material that if I hit bake, will bake whatever is on the material now. So this black and white stripey thing into this image. Let's see if it works. I hit bake down here. You can watch the progress. Let me just bring this up and go to an image, uh, I mean image editor and enable the untitled here. Okay, it's already done. So. I forgot to mention in the beginning that this only works if your object is nicely UV unwrapped. Suzanne comes with a UV map by default. That's why this worked. So if you have your own object and you want this effect, you first have to create a nice UV unwrapping, UV map for your object, and then you can bake it. And this is the UV map that Suzanne comes with. And this stripey texture that we have on here is now baked into this image. Now, how do we use this as a displacement? So first of all, let me plug our just white surface. Let's make it orange just to be a little bit more interesting. Um, so this is uh, that. Now we're going to switch off adaptive subdivisions and I also disable the subdivision modifier for now. Next, I'm going to put on a displace modifier. And you can see it does weird things to Suzanne. Uh, the displace modifier is based on a texture. We already have an image, but it's not a blender texture. We have to create a texture first. So we go to the texture tab, new, gives us a new texture based on an image or a movie. That's fine. We take our untitled, which is this thing here. And yeah, so we have a displacement. Uh, I mean, we have a texture. We can use this texture now in the displace modifier. We want the coordinate system needs to be UV because uh, Suzanne has a UV map and that's the UV map that we baked this to. And we want to displace on the normal. Yeah, that's fine. But the strength, of course, is a bit much. So let's see, 0 0.03. Okay. Yeah, and it's doing something. But now Suzanne doesn't have enough geometry. So that's like the big, the big problem. And that's why the micro displacements in cycles is so amazing because it's like down to one pixel of detail. Uh, now we're actually displacing geometry. So we need geometry to displace. And that's why we still have this subdivision surface in here. And we really have to crank up the levels now to get this to look halfway decent. In here, you can see this is always a problem because like the, the geometry that we have where 
we're displacing it inwards like this, the displace modifier just moves vertices around. And then we have intersecting, interlocking faces, which are not very nice, um, but that's just the way it is. The, the real only solution for this is to crank up the level of subdivisions to get even more geometry. And at some point it starts to look pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Okay, so now we have real displaced geometry. Um, we could help a little bit by adding another modifier. The smooth, smooth, should we, we, we could use a smooth corrective modifier. Let's see what that does. And yes, Blender is getting a little bit slower now. Does that actually change something if we turn this up to 10? Is this smoothing anything? Probably not. Let's try... Let's try the, just the smooth modifier. I'm just looking for something to smooth out these overlapping faces now. Of course, that's going to smooth out all the other details too. But, you know, maybe it helps a little bit. Okay, smooth amount of three. So this is what we get. Now, how do we make this like stick to the so that we have real geometry that we can uh, 3D print. Well, we can just assign all of these um, modifiers, right? So by hovering over here and hitting Control A, you assign the modifier. You make it real. It's not a modifier anymore. Now we're doing destructive things here. We also assign the texture and we also assign the smooth. And now, check this out. Uh, if I go in here, let me switch on the overlays, and if I go into edit mode, which is going to take a while because we have crazy amounts of uh, geometry now. Let's see if it even works. Oh, it's still working. Oh yeah, okay. You can see this is just, this is just nuts. <laughs> this is the amount of geometry we have now and that we need in order to create all these bumps down the side. So this is huge amount of geometry. So now we can add um, a, a decimate modifier. Now that we have all of these displacements on our geometry, let's add a decimate modifier. Let's go collapse to, what does it say down here? Holy moly. We have 8 million faces. Okay, so let's go to 0 0.05. Click out of here and then wait for the this decimate modifier to do its thing. Hui, that took a few minutes actually, but now the decimate modifier is done. We're down to just 800,000 faces. Yeah, and it still looks usable, I think. So I'm gonna apply this modifier as well. Just hover over here, Control A, which applies it. I hope that doesn't take as long again. Okay, that took forever again. Uh, let me know in the comments, please, if there is a faster way to decimate geometry in Blender. However, now, if I go into edit mode, you can see we have, now we have triangles, but that really doesn't matter if we 3D print, but we have uh, way less geometry to work with. Now we can export this to an STL file. So let's go export um, STL experimental. Oh, there's, I guess there's a new STL exporter. Let's just do this real quick. Let's call it, oh, I already have test STL. That's fine. And the scale I think needs to be 1000. That's always with the L STL scales. I think it's 1000. Let's just export this. And now let's jump into Bamboo Studio, which is uh, the slicer of my choice. And let's pull in that STL real quick. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the STL in here. Loading, your object appears to be too large here because I think Suzanne is like one meter tall. So let's shrink it to fit, probably a shrink it even more. Let's do five. Yeah, so this looks, uh, let's make it bigger. Okay, so now you can see we have our nicely displaced Suzanne. Cool. 
Um, and now if I hit a slice with a layer height of 0.2, we will see that there's a few issues in here. Okay, so this is the result of the slicing operation. <laughs> and I think the problem in here are the eyes. Let's see if we can fix it. I'm just gonna go back to Blender and quickly go into edit mode. Deselect everything, hover over the eyeball, hit L and then the other one, L and X vertices, just delete those. Now this looks a bit creepy, but that doesn't matter. Let's export this again to an STL with the scale. Okay, let's go back to Bamboo Studio and drag and drop the STL file in here again. It's too large, yes. Okay, and then down here, you can see there is an error, non-manifold. So even with the smooth modifier and the, the decimate, we still have overlapping geometry. So it says it's non-manifold, but the slicer gives me a repair option. And all I have to do is click that using some sort of Windows service. And that's done. It says the following model object has been repaired. Okay. So now I should be able to slice it. Let's see. Yes, we have a complete Suzanne. And now we have, now we have the layer lines on top of the layer lines, which is kind of cool. We get this warning that of course we can't print it this way. We are gonna need support. Well, let's try that. Support, we enable supports. We use uh, tree supports. Style organic, okay, slice again. And here we are, now we can't really see Suzanne because of all of the tree supports. But yeah, we have an interesting model sliced and we could send this to the 3D printer. And I think that's what that patron actually wanted. Wanted those nice sort of 3D printed layers on the sides of the model. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Um, check out patreon.com slash chrisp. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.